welcome to the Nitty Cats podcast, episode five. My name is Julie, and I am a Colorado dyer, spinner, knitter, crocheter, and most importantly, cat rescuer. Today, we have kind of a different um, format in that I have two special treats for you. Number one, I wanted to announce the winners of our giveaway. Um, we had four winners. I was doing one winner for each thousand subscriber, and I was only like 25 away from 4,000, so I thought, I'm just doing it. And the winners are Mocha Caramel Latte, Ruthie McAllister, Joyce Ford, and Catherine Purnell. Now, Catherine's already contacted me. She's from Australia, and she said, she was so sweet. She said, don't send me anything, it's too expensive. No, I'm sending you something. I'm gonna send you a little something in the mail and then I'm, I'll send you something via the internet somehow. But thank you, you're gracious, but I am sending you something. And the three, win the other people, maybe they're in America, maybe I have more international winners, but they will each win two skeins of e either this um, yarn, this yarn, or this yarn. All fall colors. They will also receive a Nitty Cats Progress Keeper and Stitch Markers, as well as Nitty McPurley Hand Balm, which is grapefruit and rhubarb. So yummy. I'm glad that you're getting this. And also a cute little cat note card, which you can send to another cat lover. And this is so cute. So thank you for participating. Thank you for commenting. Um, I had oh, 999 comments. That's pretty amazing. And thank you very much. It was fun. Everything that I'm doing with YouTube, I'm learning a lot. So <laughs> here we go, right? Um, th but the next thing that we're going to do today is yarn dyeing. And not only yarn dyeing, we're doing yarn dyeing with plants, specifically rabbit brush. Now, rabbit brush is a plant that grows in this part of the country, the United States. It also grows in Colorado, so I live in Colorado. It also grows in Nevada, New Mexico, uh, Wyoming, Montana, probably Idaho as well. And it's this beautiful, beautiful bush that grows all over the fields and has these beautiful flowers, yellow flowers. I came to know rabbit brush from a client of mine. I was sitting there talking, of course, things evolve to knitting usually. <laughs> have to find knitters and she was asking me if I dyed and at that point I had only done a little bit of dyeing with Kool-Aid which is really fun and she was telling me about she said you should dye with rabbit brush I'm like what's rabbit brush she said it's everywhere I couldn't place it in my head and it wasn't the time of year that it was still around but I went right home and looked it up saw the picture and I thought by golly I'm gonna look for this come August September sure enough August September it is absolutely everywhere. If you live in this area, get out there and pick some rabbit brush. And that is one of the reasons why I'm doing the, the, this episode so quickly, so soon after the last one, is because if there's anybody who lives in the area, go pick some rabbit brush. So anyway, what is rabbit brush? Rabbit brush is a native plant, obviously, to this area. It was named of its, for its bulb-type shape, and I'm going to put a picture up. And the rabbits hide underneath there, perfect for rabbit hiding. But what really intrigued me about rabbit brush is that the Native Americans of this area, specifically the Navajo, used it for dyeing fabrics and threads and probably skins. And I think that is amazing. I don't know if you guys ever <laughs> wonder, but my mind never stops about where do things come from? How did they do this? How do they get this color? So the fact that I grabbed onto that little tidbit and it's here and I thought I'm doing this. So I I made this sweater, which this is the In Stillness sweater by Alicia Plummer. Um, and it's made of superwash worsted knit picks yarn. And this was used with the alum mordant, which we're gonna go through this a little bit more after you've watched the video of the dyeing. Um, is there anything else I need to tell you about rabbit brush? I don't think so, it's amazing. The one thing I do want to tell you from my initial dye is that different 
different types of yarn actually soak up the dye differently and that's something that you need to know. So I was kind of experimenting. This was the superwash and I don't know if you can tell how intense the color is. It is intense. I have one little bit left. And it is the most beautiful color. This is all I have left. Really subtle toning. And this is wool, 100% wool. And this is alpaca. And I showed you, I will show you all these on the video too. But this is, well, this was my initial group. So I hope you enjoyed the little video. <laughs> I'm new at all of this, but I just thought this was too cool not to share. Plus it's the time of year that you can all get out there and start gathering things. Um, all kinds of, there's all kinds of resources to do this. So anyway, without further ado, I'm gonna start the dyeing video and I'll see you right back here. Okay, welcome to my kitchen. This is where we are going to do our plant dyeing. I explained to you why I was interested in, in rabbit brush. And that was really what made me start thinking about dyeing. You also can do a more permanent dyeing. It's called acid dyeing. And that's what most commercial or indie dyers use for valid reasons. Number one, it's very permanent and the formulas are very consistent. So that's what they use. You get a consistent color every time they have to reproduce that color. <clears throat> the challenging part to someone like myself is that it is a little bit more dangerous. You just, not dangerous, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's not dangerous, but you just have to be a little bit more careful. And by that I mean the particles that are used in, it's a very, very fine powder and it, you have to use a full-on respirator mask and you have to have a completely set, different set of equipment um, for that kind of dyeing tongs. You cannot cross anything in your kitchen. It has to be fully ventilated. So I get kind of freaked out about stuff like that. And so I'm not sure I ever will. Maybe I will, who knows? My, my thing is never say never because the minute I say I'm not gonna do something, I do. So I have had some success with plant dyeing. Like I said, I explained to you why I started doing it. Um, the rabbit brush was very intriguing to me. Um, my mom is, I think I told you, is Hispanic. Her mom's, my, my, on her mom's side, from the Iberian Peninsula or Spain, but on her father's side, they're from New Mexico. So Native American um, heritage, and I love that. I like that. It, the whole Hispanic part was kind of what we grew up with. My father is um, Sc um, Scandinavian, Norwegian, and um, English. So that side, it was a small family, and so we didn't know them very well. And my mom's side, they had a lot of kids. <laughs> so we had a wonderful cultural experience. And so I like the whole idea of the Native American people and what they used. And that's how I got excited about plant dyeing. And I'm always curious, how did they do things? How did they make their beautiful colors? Well, they use plants. <clears throat> what I'm wearing, this is an Isabel Kramer. I'm gonna be challenged here. <laughs> Pattern, I think it's called Santa Fe and it's a little capelet. Um, I'll back up maybe a little bit and you can see. Um, this was dyed with avocado pits and skins. And it's a beautiful coral color. I do think I did a Kool-Aid rinse because I had some inconsistency in color. So, um, but for the most part, this is the color of the avocado pits and skins. And I saved for a long time. Anybody who knew me at work would bring me their avocados. I had bags of them. And that is the thing with plants. You do have to have quite a bit. <clears throat> I want to show you some things that you can dye with. Um, these are marigolds. So I do have a whole bag of marigolds. And this is a great time to be saving them. I do want to, wanted to do this in the fall because if you have a garden or you go for walks, things out in nature are dying. You can pick them. I have rhubarb leaves, so if you have rhubarb or your neighbor has rhubarbs, it's, this, these are toxic um, to eat, but you can die with them. <laughs> carrot tops, the tops of the plant, the top of carrots. And then the rabbit brush. Here's rabbit brush. Here's it fresh. I picked it this morning on my walk. It is so beautiful. You can see this color. 
and the smell. The fragrance is like honey. It is just the most beautiful fragrance. Now I'm not using anything I picked this year because I had a giant bag of stuff that I had picked earlier. This is, this is actually I picked in 2018. 2018? No, probably 2019, but I picked a ton of it and I dried it. And this is what it looks like dried. So I was a little bit nervous. I thought I'm gonna do this whole demonstration and it may not even work because it's so old. And then I thought, of course it is because all of these are dry. I went to a yarn fest here in, in Loveland, Colorado, and there was a company there called The Natural Twist, and they have a website, thenaturaltwist.com, and she had a whole board set up of all kinds of plant dyeing and the different mordants that are used to get the color. I did buy a lot. I bought some Weld, and it's dry. Let's open it for you. And I haven't used this yet. Now I'm podcasting, now that I have time, but this is what Weld looks like. I won't open all of these, but I did buy some Matter Root, and that's like, it's a powder. Brazil Wood. Long Wood Shavings. So this is a bark. And then the Cochineal, which is the, the little bugs that are on cactus and apparently they make a very red red yarn and I'm so excited to use those they I guess Starbucks got in trouble because they were using it in their strawberry shakes or whatever it's kind of gross but it does make a, it does turn it red another thing that I have used very successfully are red cabbage this is red cabbage on 100% wool and this is red cabbage on superwash you can see and that's something to consider it does affect your dye your outcome this is turmeric which I didn't have success with but I wanted to show you it as you can see over time so I I uh, it's fingering and it was a little bit of a mess I remember so I caked it up and then let it sit and you can see it's pretty, but this is what it originally was. So it's faded. It didn't, it wasn't very permanent. This is the bottom. These are the two strands of color. I'll try to get out of that. One's very pale. So it would be interesting. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna make anything with it because I can't imagine making something and not knowing it's permanent. Um, so I'm not sure I will. Today we're going to be dyeing the rabbit brush. Um, it's just special to me. I think it's really cool that the Navajo people used it, have used it for thousands of years to col make the color yellow in their garments. And <clears throat> so the interesting thing is, this is rabbit brush on 100% wool. This is a sweater I made with rabbit brush, which I'm probably wearing later. <laughs> and this is rabbit brush with iron mordant. Is that the coolest? So that's the coolest thing. That's what we're gonna do today. You're gonna get to see that. I'll talk for a minute about mordant. Mordant is simply the substance that's put in with the wool or the dye to make it permanent, to make it adhere to the garment or to the wool or to the fiber, whatever you're doing. There's acid, which is um, citric acid or vinegar. You can use vinegar. Both are food soluble. You can use iron mordant, which I have here. That's what we're gonna use today. Um, and then, or you can use alum, which is potassium. So these things, <clears throat> the potassium and the iron mordant, these, these things are, I use, Anyway, just the pots that I have designated for dyeing. I don't use them for food. I think I could. The, on, the only problem is the iron when I use iron mordant and alum. I think it's okay to use them as food soluble. I just don't. Um, but they're cool because it does change the whole outcome of what you're doing. The next thing that you can use, and this is what 
I may encourage you to try because it's so easy and you can totally use any pots in your kitchen and it's Kool-Aid. <laughs> and I have done a lot of experimenting with Kool-Aid and I have to say, some people said, is it permanent? Yes, it's absolutely permanent. There is nothing that I have dyed that has even faded. And it was the first thing that I did because I thought it's easy, it's inexpensive. Now it's not the Kool-Aid with sugar. They're the little Kool-Aid packets that are the teeny little thin packets. It's inexpensive. Um, I have a whole little collection of Kool-Aid here because I still do mess around with it. Um, your kitchen smells great. <laughs> but that's the first thing maybe if you're gonna try, you can actually just try Kool-Aid. <clears throat> the nice thing also with Kool-Aid is you don't need a mordant. It already has the citric acid in it. So you truly just dissolve packets of Kool-Aid in a measuring cup, put it in a pot, and then put your yarn in. Well, it's not that simple. I'm gonna tell you the steps to do, but that's it in a nutshell. And so you can try different things. Um, I do wanna tell you um, what kind of tools you need. Obviously you need a pot. I use these pans that I just got at Sam's because I like to lay the yarn flat in hanks, but you don't have to do that. You can do dip dyeing, especially if you're doing small quantities, you do not need those. But I just find them easier um, and they were inexpensive. I just would get a couple at a time, and, but you can lay the hank out. You can also put it just in a pot and do dip dyeing. Um, I think that's about it, but you have to have obviously a vessel. The next thing that you need are some reusable zip ties, and you'll see what I'm gonna use these for. And I like to use reusable ones because it just seems really wasteful, actually. So I like the reusable ones, plus they're a nicer quality. They're a little bit more, but it's worth it. The next thing you need is a tub for rinsing and soaking. So I usually have a couple of these, just little plastic tubs of any kind. And I think that's it. A mordant if you're if you're going to use anything other than Kool-Aid. The other thing that you can use, and I don't know where I put it, <laughs> are it's food coloring. Just go to Michaels or Hobby Lobby and get food coloring. Get the color that you like. It's the same thing as the Kool-Aid, and you could stay really consistent with what you're going to use. I don't think I got this for the black and the green. Um, and the other thing is, is that Knit Picks does also have a natural dyeing kit. I know I bought it. For the life of me, I can't find it. It's someplace. <laughs> but they do have a natural dyeing kit. So that's kind of cool too. But if you were going to start, I'd start with Kool-Aid. I also wanted to mention the yarn. Knit Picks has undyed, they call it undyables, undyed of all different kinds. They have superwash, all of their yarn bases and I do have a whole bunch of these. This is beautiful. It's actually super soft. Oh, this is merino. So this is worsted weight. They also, you also can just pick up one of these patents when they're on sale. The only thing with these is that you're gonna have to make some, you're gonna have to um, make skeins out of them, hanks. This is a skein. You're gonna have to make hanks out of them because you can't just stick this in, it'll be a mess. So if you don't have a swift, you can make a hank, a skein on a, a hank, a hank on a swift. You can do it on a nitty knotty. You can do it on the back of a chair. You can do it on your arm. Um, it's great also to do tests. When I did the Kool-Aid, I made a whole bunch of mini skeins and I did tests to see which colors I like. And I combined things. It was really fun. I'll show you the results of that sometime. And then I also get yarn from a place called the Brown Sheep Wool Company out of Mitchell, Nebraska. And I get it because they came to the yarn festival one time and they had a truckload of this bare yarn and it was really inexpensive. So I bought a whole bunch of different weights. I'm almost out of it. They don't bring very much anymore. Um, it's actually what this is made of. This one's made of the Brown Sheep Wool Company yarn with avocado pits and skins. So I think that's really all you need. I wanted to tell you also that you can get little bottles if you um, hair dye or little craft bottles. These are great if you want to um, do mixtures and then uh, create something 
a design or something in your yarn or different colors or spots of color. These are kind of fun for that. And I wanted to also show you, talk to you about over dyeing just for a quick second. There's a video out there by Taylor Earl, and I think she's Woolen Hands, and she did an over dyeing of a sweater, which was so cool. I mean, it was that was great. She, now she's a professional dyer. She used acid dyes. I will put a link to her that particular um, video in here so that you can go watch it. And see how it turns out because it was really cool but the, the reason that she was able to do a whole sweater is because she had a giant that dyeing pot um, you have to have enough room to allow the dye to go right through the all all strands to have a consistent dye otherwise you'll have a tonal dye so if you're going to over dye a sweater you have to have a big enough pot these are yarns that I bought on sale, and it's a great time to buy things like this on sale. <clears throat> Colors that you don't actually love, love, but it's okay. I mean, I kind of thought, oh, I'll use these, and then I got them home and I thought, no, you won't. I don't even like, I don't really like this color. Um, but I can over dye this. So that's what I'm going to do with these. I have three, I have. I have like three of these, sweater quantity of this, sweater quantity of this one, which I don't know, maybe that's okay, but don't know if I love it. And then this one, again, okay, don't know if I love it, but they'd be a great experiment to over dye. And so that's what I'll probably do with these. This would be really great to um, make more plummy or something, just a richer color. Um, this one, I definitely would go darker green. I'm not sure what I would do with this one. But one of the, the cool things that Taylor did is she has a color wheel, which I've since bought. So you kind of can play around and see what you're, what you're gonna end up with. The next thing you might wanna do is check out a couple books. And you can just check them out at the library. And I have some natural dyeing books that I really love and I will link them all up. Because this would be a super easy thing to do. This one talks about, let's see, no, it was this one. It was this one. And what they did is they dyed this little cotton onesie with coffee. So you can dye with coffee and tea. You're getting a reflection from the light. But it's so cute. So there's a lot you can do. So if you have an extra hank of yarn and you want a, a mocha color. Oh no, this was tea. That's what they did. You can see how they put it in the pot with tea bags. And they got that really cute mocha color, so you can do that. Um, and they did not use a mordant, so basically they stained it. But I thought that was super cute, and what a cool color. What a cool mocha color. This one I wanted to show you the difference of the mordants. So you can see here, up in this corner, I'm going to do the matter root. The matter root right here, you can see how, depending on how you mordant it or what you use as a mordant, it will change the color. Also, a really good um, dandelions. This was cool. So, you can see up there the, the strip of colors here, those are the different colors you get depending on how you mordant it. Same thing with elderberry. You can see these are the berries. These are the leaves and stem on this side. So it's just so interesting. I, you kind of are, I feel like I'm channeling my chemistry teacher, Coach Yester in high school he was awesome, and also my home ec teacher, uh, Mrs. Fleece, because that's what you, that's, this is what you're doing. You're kind of cooking. It's, a, it's some chemistry, more chemistry if you're dying with acid dyes and paying attention. I'm not really doing that. Um, I'm just experimenting. It's kind of fun to do, um, but I really like it. So what I'm going to do is I want to show you this. Um, I'm going to move the camera. <laughs> I'm probably going to ruin it, but. I want you to see the pots. I have been cooking two pots of 
the rabbit brush buds since eight o'clock this morning. It's 1.30, so they've been cooking long enough. And I'm gonna take them outside and drain them and um, get just the liquid out and put them in the pot, put them in the long trays that you see here and um, put the yarn in. So it's gonna be really cool. First thing I need to do is I need to soak my yarn for at least 30 minutes. And I'm gonna soak it. Sometimes you can soak it in the citric acid. I'm not going to, I'm actually going to put the citric acid in once I put it in the pot. Citric, if you soak it, if you soak the citric, soak it in citric acid ahead of time, it does take really well, but I want you to see the difference because the iron, mort, what I'm doing with iron mordant, I'm not soaking with citric acid. It's iron mordant and citric acid. Those are the two, two things that I'm gonna use. So um, I will put the, put the twist ties on because the twist ties help you keep it together, trust me. So I undid the hank, the skein. <laughs> I'm trying to retrain myself. This is a hank. This is a hank. This is a skein. I call everything a skein and it's wrong. So what I'll do is I'll put a twist tie on each end because it keeps it from tangling on itself. And then I'm gonna soak it. And I have to soak it for 30 minutes in water. And what that does is it allows the liquid to evenly absorb once you once you put it in the dye. You don't always have to do that, and there are techniques in which you don't, um, be, but it makes more tonal if you don't. There's actually a really, really good podcaster called Chemnitz, and her name's Rebecca, and I started watching her years ago, not thinking I would ever do this, um, but she has really cool tutorials. She's a chemist or something, because she writes the formulas, and I just can't do that. It's not my brain, it's not something I wanna do, but it's really fascinating. She does all kinds of cool things. Um, so if that's that, is something that you're interested in, you should watch her. I'll put that link too. So I'm gonna, right now I'm gonna put my ties on the yarn that I'm gonna dye. I'm gonna go drain the rabbit brush and collect the liquid, the um, blooms that are left over will go in our compost heap because again, this is all natural. This is nothing that could, would ever hurt you. In fact, um, that most of these plants are used for a lot of medicinal things. So it's kind of cool that we can actually do this. I don't know, maybe at some point I will live off grid, who knows? <laughs> it's very appealing until I'm sure the first cold winter and you just want a hot bath and a warm bed, but I like stuff like this. I like nature things, obviously. So that's why I've done all this dabbling in plant dyeing and food dyeing. <laughs> So right now, I'm gonna put this in water, go drain those, and I'll come back and we'll start dying. Okay, so what we're doing now is we are straining. Take a look at the liquid, it's so pretty. We're straining it through a colander. And again, because this is just a plant, you don't have to use special equipment. And look at the, what's inside there. All the little blooms. And it smells so good. I forgot to tell you, or did I tell you? <laughs> that rabbit brush smells like honey. I think it smells like honey. Oh, it's all coming. Here it comes. Oh. You can press, you're gonna, we're gonna wanna press it out probably. Push, push it in there and then we'll press it down with our hands. So I had that packed with blooms and it's very hot. So we will um, press it, get the liquid out. Actually, it looks pretty clean. I wonder if we do need to strain it again. Or not, maybe not. Looks pretty clean, don't you think? Yeah, I think that's probably good. So now we're gonna do the second pot and then we'll see you back inside. 
the um, yarn has been soaking, what you want to do is you want to push down and make sure that no bubbles are coming up, or not a lot of bubbles, because that's what it's doing is evenly wetting the fiber so that it um, absorbs at the same time. I also have my citric acid here ready and also just some vinegar. I did put end up putting like a quarter cup of vinegar in here because I really want an intense yellow. And then I also have my um, iron mordant right there. So I want to show you what this looks like. This is the one I'm going to actually put the um, citric acid in and they look the same. I did end up straining them a second time to get all the pieces out, but it's just this murky gold, <laughs> uh, amber color really. And then this is the one I'm going to put the iron mordant in. And then here's the fiber for that. So what I'm going to do is set this up so that you can watch me hopefully. I don't know how else to do this, but hopefully you can see that um, what I'm going to do. And I'll try and talk through it, but basically I'm just going to rinse the yarn, uh, wring, the, wring the water out of the yarn. And this is where these get super handy, these little holders. Honestly, they are so helpful. So I am just, because you can grab them. So I'm just going to rinse the yarn and wring it gently. Now remember, something to always remember with wool, this water's cold. Because what happens with 100% wool and warm water and agitation, you felt it. And I did that on this that I'm wearing, this uh, Um, Isabel Kramer Santa Fe cape. I felt at this yarn and I was, I literally had to um, take, take it apart off the skein, off the hank of yarn, like separate it without breaking it because I was working so hard to get an intense color. Um, and that's where these come in handy. They are a dream. And, and again, do two of them. You don't need them tight. So I decided to do three skeins of fingering for this one. And I'm going to set it aside, set my water aside, and then you just grab them. And this is where the magic happens. So this is where the trays are great. Now if it were... Um, you're doing just one dip dyeing, you can do a pot. And I have about the maximum yarn, I think, in this tray. This is a lot of fingering. But I thought, I, you need enough for a sweater. That's what I say. <laughs> you need enough for a sweater. So this is a lot of yarn. Hopefully my mixture is, and I probably should have used the deeper tray. I'm definitely gonna need more water but you want to do this, but again, you can't agitate at this point. Now, normally with dye, you can put your hands in, but this is a plant, remember? So it's really important that you saturate it, and that's where these come in handy. You lift them up and you turn it gently. And you push it down, and then you lift it up, And I'm going to add some more water to this once I... Um, okay, I'll fix that in a minute. But you can see how it's just brown, kind of a khaki color. It's very pretty. There's that one. Now this one, these 
these are all different, kind of an experiment. So I'm going to go ahead and, well, actually I'm not, I was going to go ahead and lay them in, but I do, I'm, I'm doing a super wash. I've never done a super wash with the Iron Mordant or a 100% wool. The last one I did was the alpaca. These are super bulky. I'm gonna make the tilde hat with them, I think. Hopefully I have enough yarn. Um, okay, I'm ready to lay these in. These should and look about the same now because Now you know why you want these. These are so good because it gets so tangly. I wanna take a quick minute to tell you about this. So you see these little pieces of wool, of wool that each hank is tied with? You have to make sure that during the dye process you're actually lifting those and moving those around um, because otherwise you will get a white line, especially on like fingering weight yarn. You can see this is a much better ratio of liquid to yarn. Again, with even Kool-Aid, don't put your hands in. You will end up with purple hands. This is just a plant dye, so I'm okay doing it. It's non-toxic. Um, and so what I'm going to do now, I will actually add some more water to this. I wished I would have kept the deeper tray up here because it really does need the deeper tray. In fact, I might do that while it's off camera because there's a lot more yarn in here. You want to make sure it's covered and then you consistently, you're just going to go with your tongs and keep pushing it around and keep changing it like this. So I will let it cook for 30 minutes or so. You can see how with no mordant, it's truly not doing much at all. <laughs> it just looks khaki. So once I put the mordant in, it's gonna start changing. And also once I start putting the heat on. So I'm gonna do two things right now. <clears throat> I'm gonna change this to a bigger tray. I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna add the mordant to this with more water and then add the mordant to that. At that point, I can't use the same tongs because I can't contaminate the iron mordant with the citric acid. And then I'm just gonna turn the heat on and let it cook, and it may have to cook till this evening because plant dyes take a little bit longer. But again, you can, it's non-toxic. You can just be in the, be in the same room, um, do things. I'll probably go outside and knit because it's so pretty today. So I will see you in a little bit. Heat is on and I wanted to show you what happens when you add the iron mordant to this. So see how it's kind of a, let's see, somewhat of white spoon. See how it's this, looks like broth, like chicken broth. That's what color it looks like. Um, but we're going to change that. <laughs> oh, we'll see what happens. I mean, if I don't know when the last time, I don't think it was 2018. I think it was before that it had to be like 2017 that I did this. And I remember when I did it and I put this iron mordant on, I said to myself, great. I just made my yarn black because watch what happens. Actually, let me see if I can get this light over here a little bit more. I don't know if that adds any, but... Can you see that changing? It's like turning black. And I remember thinking... I just made my yarn black. Now, I am not going to touch this anymore with my hands because I 
I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> Iron Mordant. Um, but did you see that change? Look at that color now. And I remember thinking, I just got the ugliest yarn ever. This is so ugly. <laughs> but I kept going and it was ama it ended up amazing. And I always wanted to do it again. So I, right now I have in here um, a super wash and three 100% wool. Last time I used alpaca. I don't think I turned one. I'm missing one, that one. Um, you can see that the citric acid is not doing much yet. They take a long time. I'm probably, honestly, will come back later, much later tonight. Um, this one's cool. Oh my gosh, that is the prettiest color. But I want it to set. I want it to be really saturated. And remember, this has heat on now. It's you don't want it to boil. In fact, I should turn it down. Um, you're just simmering. That's all you're doing is simmering. And you, you'll simmer for hours. And you come in every once in a while and push it down. Make sure you're finding those little ties. Like, I'll put gloves on probably later and come find these ties. And you can move them. You can actually move them down the yarn a little bit. But look how pretty that is already. Oh, my gosh. It is so pretty. Oh my God, goodness sakes. Um, but remember, I can't now put this in here because it will change that dye bath. So I will just keep at it. Boy, this isn't, this is slow going on this one. And I might leave it in there overnight. We may be visiting <laughs> this weekend um, because I did put a lot of yarn in there and it's gonna take a while. But I hope I get a little bit more saturated color and it turns more chartreuse too. So I may be adding a little more citric acid, um, but this is kind of how you do it when you're doing 100% wool, when you're moving it. You're just moving it and doing this and opening it like this. You are not agitating. Do not stir it. It's just fine. Remember, felting takes two things, heat and agitation. So we're only ha we only have heat. Ooh. Okay, update, it is, it's almost five o'clock, so these have been in for a long time. Um, I have a feeling that the citric acid, I'm gonna have to leave that in at least overnight, if not another day, we'll see. I'll turn the heat off um, tonight, but we'll see what happens. This one, I've actually put in a second dye bath because it was so pretty. <laughs> I took the first one out. It is so pretty, um, and I will just kind of show you how dark this is and it looks black but it's not and both the superwash and the 100% um, wool turned out great and I never use gloves so my hands are black which is crazy <laughs> one thing that I was reading about the iron morden is that it, it is hard on the um, fiber so I noticed that, and in my final rinse, I put a little bit of fabric softener in, and it seemed to have softened it up. And I wish I could have gotten a picture, because I hung them out on the tree. They're hanging out on a tree drying. <laughs> and a mother deer and her two babies came and were hanging out in our backyard, and I thought, I thought for sure they were going to knock my yarn off, so I was kind of more watching my yarn. So anyway, this is what it looks like. I will now take it over and wash it. So you can see that this water is black. And I even turned my spoon black, <laughs> which is funny. And my hands. So normally you let this sit and cool down, but I don't have any patience. 
so I put cold water on it. Look at the water, it is black. It's not really, it's just a really dark olive green and it is so pretty. I'm half tempted, but I won't, to pour that dye bath in the fingering and turn it all this color. Because <laughs> it's so pretty, but I won't do that. I'm gonna leave it overnight, see what happens. Um, this is why my hands are black. And I just squeeze it out. I don't know if you can see that color. See how it's kind of olive? So pretty. That's why I had to put three more skeins in. Because you know what I'm thinking. Best. I'm thinking best. The other thing about dyeing with fiber and natural things, um, I don't know if you have to, if you're doing acid dyeing, if you have to use anything special or dump the water any place special. Surely there is some sort of a, I don't know, what do you think? But with any kind of dyeing, whether it be Kool-Aid or any kind of dyeing, you rinse it until there is no more, until the water's clear. Usually with Kool-Aid dyeing, you will notice everything, um, sorry, you'll notice with Kool-Aid dyeing that everything usually gets absorbed and you have clear water and a clear rinse. That's not the case with plant dyeing. I've never had everything absorb in. You're just trying to get as much as you can. In. And you can see this is still black. So you just keep doing this until the water's clear. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and then I'll take you out and show you where I hung them. Okay, this is where I'm hanging my yarn to dry. And a few minutes, not a few minutes, 30 minutes earlier or so, there was a mother deer and her baby out here eating some of the foliage and I thought for sure, for sure. They were going to eat my, knock my yarn off, but they didn't. But I don't know if you can see how pretty this is. This is the bulky weight wool. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. It is just beautiful. And it's spectacular. This is interesting, and I just have to tell you what happened here. <clears throat> so it wasn't developing the citric acid one batch, and I just couldn't figure out why. I couldn't figure out what I had done to make it such a different color. Well, I was looking through my dye um, materials and supplies and wondered why I had such a, such a small amount of the alum mordant, which is another mordant. And then I realized, you know what, that's what I had used on the chartreuse yellow batches of rabbit brush that I had made. So I thought, okay, well, I'm going to add what I had left, which wasn't very much, to this batch and I've actually um, let this sit. This has now been in for almost 48 hours, not quite, <clears throat> on and off heating while I was home, but letting it sit overnight. So this is a combination of citric acid 
and then the alum mordant, which is so interesting because it came out this, um, it's like an orange, almost a light tangerine, which I'm super excited about. It's not the color that I was going to show you and was hoping that I'd get, but it is an amazing color and I'm really excited about it. So I'm going to take it over and rinse it and okay we're rinsing now and you can see how even after the first little bath here it still has a lot of liquid in it or a lot of color so you can see in here hardly any color so this will be my last one And I'll just show you this. That's the color right now. We'll see what it looks like when it um, dries. Stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed that. So I wanna show you the results now. So my little accident, <laughs> thinking I had used citric acid initially when I had used um, alum actually turned out really good. I was sad. I get sad. I'm like, dang it. I messed up a whole sweater's quantity worth of fiber, but it turned out amazing. It's, it's a cross between the, what the superwash was and what the buttercup of the other, of the, uh, hundred percent wool was. And I hope you can see this. I had to find a shady spot today because I was putting a sweater on and it's still 80. <laughs> so I hope you can see this color. I'll take some film and light for you to see it too. It has a little bit of tangerine. Here's the, the other one. This was the initial with the 100% wool. This is 100% wool with alum and citric acid. I also wanted to show you on this one what I was talking about felting and how careful you have to be. I, was, I am super careful now because the avocado pit one, I felt it, I was pulling it apart, hoping it wouldn't break. So even though I was super careful, I wanted to show you this. See how these are sticking together? Those are felted together, very slightly. And once I cake it, they'll all come apart. But you can see how that's felted. And it'll be fine. But you saw how careful I was lifting and barely moving around, you cannot agitate while it's on heat. I don't bring it up to a lot of heat. I just kind of bring it up to steaming, not even boiling, um, especially with 100% wool. But I thought, this is amazing. I'm so excited you guys to make something. I don't know what, it's the coolest color. I've never seen this color before. I love it. The next thing was, um, the bulky that I did and it turned out, this is 100% wool. It turned out very much like my um, alpaca, which I thought was interesting. I thought I would have a really different color. Here's the alpaca from before, and here's the 100% the, uh, wool. But amazing colors, and, and I love this. Um, sorry, my phone, I didn't silent it, sorry. Um, so that was cool. The, but the coolest, remember I told you that I put in, um, I wanted to put in a superwash because it just takes the dye differently? Well, it sure did. Oh my gosh. And this color, and I'm going to have to take a picture in the light. I'm literally under a tree in the shade. But it, it looks black. It's not. It is the richest, most beautiful green color so pretty even my husband commented he's like wow that's beautiful and so what i did is because i loved that so much as it was coming out i quick ran downstairs and soaked some more yarn and um the same yarn thinking i wonder if i can get a sweater's quantity well i didn't because it didn't come out the same it's a little bit lighter so here's the original and here's that so you can see the dye bath was more concentrated the first time around and then here's the other color oh you're getting a little bit of light there that's good so you can see it but I have to tell you 
I get kind of squealy, which is weird. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. I think this is such a beautiful color. And I think this is such a beautiful color. So you know what I'm doing this afternoon. I need to make pesto out of my basil because I have so much basil, but I'm also gonna do a little more rabbit brush hunting because I'll probably dry it and do it later in the winter um, so that I have it. But I would love to make my husband a sweater out of this. He really loved it. So pretty. I think that's it, you guys. I just wanted to share that with you. I didn't know if you wanted to see the um, Santa Fe by Isabel Kramer up a little bit. This, this is the one I did with avocado pits and then a real mild um, Kool-Aid, like really weak Kool-Aid bath after, did I do it afterwards even? I might've done it after it was already knit. No, I didn't, I didn't. Um, but avocado pits are a cool one too. So I think that's it. Next time I will um, be, it'll be the month of October. It'll probably be the month of October before I post this. Today is actually the 25th of September, but I wanna get it out so you guys can start collecting all the things that you need to collect to do some plant dyeing this, some, this, the, this fall. October's a busy month um, for me. I turn 60. <laughs> So my sister and I, her birthday's in October, in September, and so we were gonna take a little trip to a town called Uray with our husbands. It's a beautiful mountain town, and um, I hope we still get to do it. Our mom's not doing so well. So if we don't, we don't, because she's important, and so we need to be here for her. And then my son has Parents Weekend. He's a Colorado Buffalo. He goes to CU Boulder, and they're having a pretty good season. So I have Parents Weekend. And I think that's it, but that's enough for me. So I don't know if I will get another video done in October, but if not, I will see you in November. I do have finished ob objects, which I will show you. One finished object and three on the needles. One of them super cool. Actually, they're all super cool. But anyway, like and subscribe. Those are the things that keep my video out there. So if you liked this content, go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Have a great fall. By the way, September was a lot better for me. Thanks for wishing me well. Bye. So we're on the hunt for some rabbit brush today um, so that we can do our dyeing. And not really hunting because I know exactly where it is. I see it all the time now. So it's early morning and this little trail that I walk every single morning is full of rabbit brush. And this is what it looks like. It's this beautiful yellow flower, and this is almost in full bloom. This one you can tell has not quite bloomed yet. And so we probably have a few more days, maybe another week before we pick it. Um, but you can see this whole area is just full. A rabbit brush. And it's such a cool thing. Um, there are a couple more spots up here. This is the sun, I don't know, the sun's not peeking through. I'll see if I can get a good shot. But this whole area is full of rabbit brush. Now, 10 years ago, who knew? I did, like I said, I did not know about rabbit brush and I'm not sure I really even noticed how beautiful it was. <laughs> but here I am, I watch it and I appreciate it. In fact, I'd really like to plant some someplace in our garden because of the beautiful honey fragrance it gives off. probably perfect actually these blooms are perfect to pick they're open and full there's one over here that's done which is strange this is what it looks like when it's done and you can see that the little 
seeds have already to come out and I'm sure that's how it spreads. You can see that in the sun. See the little, they go off and spread and that's why this whole area is full. It's a beautiful day by the way, look at that. Oh, this is my morning strength. I look at those mountains and I think, wow, there's, there's Long's Peak, one of the 14ers. This reservoir is normally very full in the summer. They drain it um, to grow food just east of here. But this is also where I kayak. <laughs> so I can either walk myself down or walk my kayak down. And pretty, pretty fortunate to live here. It's a, the be beautiful view. Thanks for coming on a rabbit brush hunt for me. It's everywhere. <laughs> Thank you.